makes you so sick at heart that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. There is a new horrendous trend in Britain against women, which is a lot of young women have reported, and young men as well, it hasn't been limited to just women, uh, but mostly it's been women, have been apparently attacked in nightclubs with needles that apparently have uh, some kind of drug, basically some kind of drug that will, will spike them. And this has... Uh, reached apparently some quite alarming proportions uh, with a lot of university age women um, being very scared to go back to to nightclubs despite the fact that the country is now has full freedom in terms of social activities and the like and this is really just look i think most of my audience is from the us and uh, i suspect that perhaps um, only a few of you have, have lived, maybe maybe a number of you have visited Britain, but I, I really wonder how many have actually lived in Britain. Um, and let me tell you something. Britain, if you think the, the image of Britain is uh, you know something that you would imagine from Downton Abbey, uh, it's not. It's unbelievably uncivilized in so many ways that would be shocking, not just to people in other developed countries, but uh, even as a Mexican, I find some of the incidences of violence that happen in that country absolutely appalling. Absolutely appalling. Like, they, they shock even my sensibilities. Um, and I think a lot of the problem with the kind of violence that you see in Britain is that it's often so random. Like, Violence in a country like Mexico has uh, very specific, like, financial objectives. You know, it's, it's uh, people be robbing other people, uh, or it's cartels fighting against each other. But there's a purpose to it, you know what I mean? Whereas so much violence in Britain is just, like, some friggin' yobs on the street just want to, you know, beat the shit out of someone in a bus stop for fun. That's, that's it. That's the point. And... In, in recent years, I, I definitely think that after the financial crisis, like a lot of, and austerity and just the general hardship being faced by a lot of people has just increased the, uh, perhaps the, the number of, of incidences of violence, not so much, but the, the type definitely has. And, and I'll give you some examples. So a couple of years ago, there was a, an epidemic of acid attacks. In, in London and other major cities. And again, some of these were, you know, acid attacks are unfortunately very common in, in places like South Asia. And it's usually uh, revenge attacks by men against women. Whereas what was happening in, in London at the time was also just very completely random. Um, there were people who were just like randomly attacked on the street. There were a lot of, um, uh, what's it called? Um, you know, people on, on, on bikes, you know, like Uber Eats drivers, things like that, who were attacked. Uh, yeah, it was pretty bad. It, it got better after this. But um, yeah, it was, it was definitely a, a concern for a while. Uh, now we also have moped gangs with machetes. Can you believe me? Mach like, this is something you would imagine in, in, in sub-Saharan Africa. And yet, apparently, this is now normal in london the wealthiest city in europe at least for a few people uh a couple of months ago i was also this is probably the worst that i've seen just again the the randomness of it the uh the, the lack of purpose this was a, a group of of people who i guess were out uh at a party or something they were dressed as it was a it was a fancy dress party and i think the reason that a lot of brits love fancy dress parties is because they can kind of um step away from from their own personalities and be someone else and usually that other someone else is someone who behaves much worse than they would if they were dressed as themselves and so there was this is 
uh, you know, slight trigger warning because this is this is quite violent. So yeah, this was a group of like a dozen freaking clowns, and especially one that was dressed as Super uh, Spider Man, and they just went to to a supermarket um, in Clapham Junction. So this is not central London, but you know, pretty pretty close. And they just started causing a, a rockets in, inside the, the supermarket for no apparent reason whatsoever. And they just started, you know, picking fights with the security guards. Uh, yeah, they're, they're all dressed as something. There's a guy that looks like he's a, a Ghostbuster. This, but, but it's the Spider-Man guy that's the most obnoxious. Like, he's, he's fucking coked out. Uh, well, God knows what is wrong with him. But then uh, they go into like the back area of the store and then they just start like, what the hell? Like, who, who does this? Who goes into... They, they went into that store with the, with the explicit purpose of just doing that. And now he's, he's literally in like the back of the store punching people. Uh, including one person who's on a wheelchair and has to witness all this. Now he's even using a freaking weapon. And, you know, maybe this is the most extreme case of something like this happening, but, but I've personally seen so many incidences of just people behaving badly in public, like very aggressively and very violently, in supermarkets, in stores. Uh, in so many other places and like this shit I'm sorry this shit is not normal and I, I don't think Brits really understand that this shit does not happen in other places with the regularity that it happens in Britain this you don't see this in Mexico I'm sorry you don't see this uh, look look at that kicking and punching a woman anyway Back to the original subject, the uh, the plague of needle attacks, which is now becoming a problem. And uh, there was apparently uh, a show, well, there's a show called the uh, LBC and a show called Cross Question with Ian Dale. Now, Ian Dale is, is a right wing. Like most of the LBC is very right wing. And... I guess they, they have this cross-question panel with, with diff people with different views to discuss the issue. And one of the persons they have invited is a guy called Toby Young. If you're British, you'll know who Toby Young is. He's one of the most obnoxious journalists in, in Britain. He's basically your, your typical you know, anti-woke, anti-SJW, uh, that kind. I think he's... I forget if he's written for the for the Spectator. I think he has, uh, or or spiked one of those. Uh, but yeah, he is just absolutely horrible. And they have him on the show to discuss the the incidences of of needle attacks. And you gotta understand, when someone is that confident that you will carry a needle filled with a drug to a nightclub that you plan to use on an unsuspecting woman in order to spike her and subsequently most likely rape her. There is like a cultural element of acceptability in this. They probably don't do it alone. Their mates know what they're doing. In fact, it's probably more than one of them who are doing it. And the reason that it becomes culturally acceptable to carry a needle with drugs to a nightclub is because you have a culture that is fundamentally sexist, that basically sees women as, as objects that you will use for your own sexual enjoyment. And that if you do not have you know, the skills to, to have sex with her, um, you know, the way that is considered fair game you know if you go to a nightclub you have you know you have good game you can convince a girl to to go home and sleep with you that's fine it's consensual sex have fun no one's against that if they can't do it the right way they feel entitled to have sex with them anyway 
and they will take that needle filled with drugs to the nightclub. So this is a cultural thing. And who do they have on the show? Toby Young. And we're going to hear what he says because it'll seem very harmless. But then we're going to look at all the things that he actually has said about women. It's James in Leatherhead. Hello, James. Good evening. Um, I'd just like to ask the panel um, how they would um, suggest that security of clubs um, would police um, uh, people who want to come in and, and drug people, especially with regards to the injections. This has been in the news today. We covered it on the news hour. I have to say it was a completely new one on me before today that I'd heard of people spiking people's drinks and putting powder in them. But apparently people are going up to women, some men as well, it seems, and injecting their hand or arm or, or leg. And they don't, it's a very small needle, so they don't know that they've been injected. And then within a very short time, they just become incapable. It, it, it's an appalling thing. But what to do about it? Toby Young. Yeah, it's uh, really scary, Ian. Um, I've got an 18-year-old daughter, and she drew my attention to it. And she and her friends are really worried about it, understandably, and um, are reluctant to go to clubs or even pubs um, because of the risk now um, of being injected by some, you know, with some unknown substance by uh, an assailant of some kind. Um, I don't know what you can do. I mean, I guess you could, um, would a metal detector pick up a needle? Um, some of these clubs already have metal detectors um, they screen people with when they go in and out. Um, maybe it would be too small to be picked up that way. Um, hopefully, the, it's only a very small number of people and they'll be caught quite quickly and receive um, stiff prison sentences. Oh, Toby, if only it were that simple. Again, no mention. His solution is merely a technical one. He doesn't offer anything about the culture of misogyny that exists that allows men to to think that they can get away with this and let's let's look at uh, his record on uh, on on women's issues so he was originally given the job of university watchdog under Theresa May but then he was let's just say that people noticed his twitter record and he was forced to resign so here's a good snippet of, of all the things that he has said about women. While watching Comic Relief in 2009, he commented, What happened to Winkleman's breasts? Put some weight, girly. A few hours later, he wrote, Alan Carr has bigger breasts than Claudia Winkleman. While watching Prime Minister's Questions in 2011, he wrote, That's quite a cleavage behind EDM Ed Miliband. In 2012, during... Prime Minister's question, he tweeted, Serious cleavage behind Ed Miliband's head. Anyone knows who it belongs to? He followed it up with, Breaking, cleavage belongs to Pamela Nash, referring to former Airdrian Schott's MP Pamela Nash. In 2013, he responded to criticism of his previous comments by saying, Women who display a lot of cleavage shouldn't then complain when men notice them. I guess it's women's fault as well that they get in, uh, you know, if, if they weren't attractive and weren't wearing, you know, revealing uh, dresses or outfits to those clubs, men wouldn't wouldn't uh, inject them with drugs. I, I guess that's the same logic that applies here, doesn't it? Uh, in 2004, he wrote an article about posing as a lesbian for the night and embarking on a whistle-stop tour of New York's hottest lesbian clubs with the aim of drawing lesbians into his confidence to make out with them on the dance floor. <laughs> this is the guy who acts outraged about... Um, yeah, about needle attacks. In a spectator column in 2012, he called on the government to repeal the Equalities Act, saying schools have got to be inclusive. This means wheelchair ramps, the complete works of Alice Walker in the school library, though no Mark Twain, the special education needs department that cope with anything from dyslexia to Munchausen syndrome by proxy. He went on to say, if Gov is serious about wanting to bring back all levels, the government will have to repeal the Equalities Act because any exam that isn't acceptable to a functionally illiterate troglodyte with a mental age of six, will be judged to be elitist and therefore forbidden by Harmon's law. Uh, yeah, so this is not related to uh, women, but it's more of his essentially anti-woke bullshit. Uh, 
Uh, oh, and he's apparently a supporter of eugenics. How unsurprising is this? In 2015, he wrote in support of embryo screening to weed out children deemed less likely to have high IQs. Uh, yeah, in, Aust in the Australian Periodical Quadrant, he wrote about technology that could allow parents to select the potentially most intelligent embryo in vitro. My proposal is this. Once this technology becomes available, why not offer it free to charge to parents on low incomes with below average IQs? Uh, this is basically like Charles Murray shit. You know, Charles Murray, the guy from uh, The Bell Curve. It could help to address the problem of flatlining intergenerational social mobility and serve as a counterweight to the tendency of the meritocratic elite to become a hereditary elite. So he's the kind of guy that, you know, uh, tries to, to bandage his, his incredibly right-wing reactionary views by saying, no, 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 but, but it, it, this is all for the better. You know, it, it, this actually helps the least advantaged in society. But anyway, those are the, uh, yeah, the... Among his greatest hits, there is more. There are more, sorry. Um, so the question that I would make is, why is he invited to this conversation? Why? This is what I don't get about the media, both in Britain and the US. But in Britain, it ha there's a real problem with this. Because whenever there's, there's a, a topic, they want to bring the most controversial voices because that gets them clicks that gets them likes that gets them views so that that is why for example nigel farage was always on every freaking during the entire brexit drama he was always on every freaking show despite the fact that his party never pulled more than like 10 percent of the vote and yet he was always there he had so much airtime that was given him for free by the media, because yeah, let's have, you know, the, the, the people with the shocking controversial opinions, let's give them a free platform because it boosts our commercial viability. And that is so friggin' sad because all it, all it does, it means is, is that the media just ends up picking the, the, the more extreme voices which are, by the way, always from the right, because they never do that for the left. You know, they, they will never pick, oh, we're going we're gonna to have a, a liberal centrist uh, on the show or like a traditional conservative. I know. Let's bring a communist to argue against them. They never do that. But when they have a liberal centrist uh, or maybe like just a, a center leftist, oh, yeah, let's bring fucking Nigel Farage as the counterweight. So, yeah, uh, Toby Young should not be in a conversation about any issue that involves uh, women's rights uh, or any issue involving women with his record. I mean, I'm sorry. He, he, he's not the person. You've got to be kidding me that in a country of over 60 million people, only there was no one better than Toby Young to come on this show to discuss this. You've got to be kidding. And well, yeah, that's the that's the state of the media in Britain. And yeah, we'll see what they we'll see what happens with these uh, with these needle attacks. They are appalling. They are shocking. And contrary to what Toby Young seems to suggest, it, it's not just an issue of putting metal detectors. It's ending a culture in which men feel emboldened and entitled to do whatever means necessary. Uh, including taking a friggin' needle filled with drugs and poking it at an unsuspecting woman in a nightclub for the only purpose that you will subsequently rape them. Because that's the point of it. That is the point. So, yeah. If you like this video, please like, please share. Most importantly, please subscribe. And I'll see you next time.